In this video, you will write the smart contract for the banking industry. So finance is very important concept in the blockchain. So if you know how to build a smart contract in the financial sector, that will give you a very good push and it will increase your understanding how to write the smart contract when it's come to finance. So let's write the contract. So let me provide the license identifier and let me take the sorority version. So in this, I'm going to take this 8.0 version. You can go beyond, but don't go below this. Let's define our contract and I call it banking. In that we have to define a couple of state variables. So let's define that. The first state variable we have is the mapping. In that we are keeping the track of the address with a UND type and in this will return the balance. So we have the first mapping, then we have to keep the track of the owner of the contract. And let's create our constructor. In that we don't need to pass any argument we have to simply update the owner as a payable because there is a in, transaction is involvement so whoever will transfer the funds whoever will transfer the money we have to make his or her address as a payable so if you have any confusion about this payable keyword make sure to follow the nft marketplace project or the complete sorority course and that i have explained everything so this is the constructor we have let's come down and let's create the very first function so the first function we have is for the deposit because obviously it's a financial smart contract so we need to have a function where the user can come and they can deposit fund so let's create the function public payable and here if it's zero then we have to throw this error message and here we have to simply update the data in the contract update the data in the contract balance is the mapping in that we are passing the address of the person who is depositing the fund and we are updating the balance so that's pretty simple and let's close this function so this is the first function we have in the contract let's come here let's create the second function which is a withdrawable withdrawable so they can easily able to withdraw their fund from this contract so unt amount public so anybody can call this contract let's make this required and we have to check for the condition so the condition we have built here that only owner can withdraw the font so if the person is calling this withdraw function and if it's not the owner then we have to throw this error message we have to do the second check so we'll say required amount less or equal to balance then the message dot sender if this statement is true then we want to make the conditions and take the code ahead otherwise we have to throw this error message that insufficient balance let's do the third check and that we have to check that the amount is greater than zero then we have to throw this error message if it's not and finally we have to make the transaction so payable message dot sender and we have to call this transfer method and in that we have to pass the amount because this payable will allow this message dot sender to call this transfer function and when the transfer function is getting called on this message dot sender then the amount will get transfer to the owner because that's the condition we have built here simply come here and then we have to simply subtract the amount from the mapping and that's it okay so i hope whatever function we have written that makes sense to all of you so what we have done first we have called this withdraw function in that we are passing the amount the first condition is that whoever is calling this function it's honor if it's not the honor then we have to throw this error message the second condition we have that if amount is less or equal to the balance of message or sender okay so if message on sender has any amount in this contract if it's less than the amount which he tried to withdraw if it's less than that then we have to say insufficient fund and the third condition we have that the amount should be greater than zero okay so if owner has any amount then only we want to make the transaction happen if it has zero then we want to make it fail and here we are simply transferring the fund we are using this payable keyword passing the message dot sender and we are calling this and then we are simply updating this data in our mapping hope this makes sense let's move to the third function the third function we have called transfer okay this will allow us to transfer the fund so there is a two different thing one is withdraw and this one is a transfer so in that we have to pass the address to whom we want to send the fund and this is the amount it would be public and here we have to do a couple of checks the amount should be less or equal to balance.message.sender so whoever is calling this function he has to have some money then only he can is able to use the contract to transfer the fund then we have come here we have to do the second check that amount should be greater than zero if it's not then we have to throw this error message transfer amount must be greater than zero. Second check now let's write the balance so once this two condition get fulfilled we have to simply do the update in the contract balance is the mapping okay in that we are simply passing the address and we are subtracting the amount which he want to transfer and 
at the end we have to simply transfer this fund to the recipient hope this makes sense okay this is the third function we have let's move to the fourth one and that we have to get the balance of the particular address okay so if anybody wants to know that what is the balance they have in the contract in the banking system so they can get that and that we have to pass the address and we have to make it payable to the user and we have to return the unt because obviously the balance is going to be in form of number so that's why we are returning unt we can come here and here we have to simply return the balance in that we have to simply pass the user the address we have got from the person who is calling this functions so this is the get balance function let's come here we have to create uh, another function we'll call grant access so this is the one special function we have included into this contract so just imagine that you have some fund and you want to provide the access to anybody to anyone who can use the uh, use your fund on behalf of you okay so that's the function we are including and this is the very common functionality you will find in the finance sector so you give check that's how you do the transfer or you give some sort of loan so that's kind of similar functionality we have tried to include in the contract so it's going to be address payable user public and in that we have to check for a condition so first is message.sender is equal to the owner so only owner can provide the access to transfer the fund okay so only the owner can grant access so that's the first check we are doing that only can owner provide that because once someone will transfer the fund that all fund will go to the contract and only owner has the access of the contract for transferring and redoing the fund okay so first check now we have to simply take this owner dot user and that's it pretty simple okay hope this entire thing makes sense okay now come here now we have to create another function in that we're going to call it revoke access so if we have provided access to anyone else and you want to remove that access then you can do with this function so we'll take it user public and in that we have to do the check so we'll say require message.sender is the honor if it's not the honor then we want don't want and here we're going to simply check for the another condition if it's user is not the honor then we have to simply say that cannot revoke access from the contract owner that's the two condition we have now we have to simply update the owner and the reason why we have used payable keyword because we're going to provide different address because initially the owner is the master of the contract and he has the payable keyword but here we are assigning new address so that's why we have to explicitly use this payable keyword to make the transaction happen otherwise it will throw you an error if you remove that payable keyword it will throw an error okay so once we do that it looks fine so this is the revoke access function we have created in the contract now let's come here the last function we have in the contract is destroy so after a certain period if you want to destroy the entire contract so you can include that kind of functionality as well in the contract so let's write that so in that what we're going to do is we're going to check for the condition that whoever is calling this function he is the owner or not because the owner has the authority to delete the contract and destroy the contract so that's the first check and then we have to simply call this self destruct method and in that we have to simply pass this honor address so the moment you will pass this honor address into the self destruct no one can able to access the contract and no one can able to call this contract so this contract will get destroyed okay and that's pretty much you have to do so that's the entire smart contract for the banking sector so i hope you guys have understood all the things which we have taken here this one is a pretty basic smart contract we have written but you can make it more complex you can add loan functionality a lot of things you can do now let's test this smart contract in the remix id this is the contract we had written for the banking industry and you will find all the function we have included into this banking system so we have our state variable we have our constructor we have this deposit function we have this withdrawal function we have this transfer function we have this get balance grant access revoke access and this is the self destruct function we have in the contract to destroy the contract so let's deploy that click on this and from here this is the only contract we have let's click on this deploy and here the transaction went through here we have the instant of the contract click on this here you will have all the instance okay if i want to check the balance of my account so i have to click here and simply come and paste here and make a call so the moment i will make a call i will see that i have zero ether into my account and if i want to deposit any fund into this account so i can do that very easily so to for depositing all i have to do is to select the amount which i want so i have five and from here i will select this ether okay and from here i have to click on this deposit so the moment i will click on deposit the transaction went through and right now you can see that this contract has five ether because 
that's what amount we have deposited into this contract and if you come here click on this balance you will find the amount you have submitted into this contract and that way we have all of this function so if you want to allow access to anyone else so you can do that so come here so i'll go on here and i will select this account number two i'll save it and i want to provide an access so let's provide the access i will paste here and i will going to say grant access and here you can see the transaction win fail because that's the logic we have included here in this function so only owner can allow any access to other user okay and that's the logic we have built if i come back here if i go to my first account and if i come here go to the second account and i have to copy this account and then i have to go back to the first account the owner and now if i call the transaction went through okay so click on this grant access the transaction went through and this time we have different owner okay so the owner is the second account and this is the transfer function we have in that we have to pass this data we have to pass the recipient and the amount so let's come here open that in that i'm going to transfer a couple of funds so click on this and i want to transfer funds to my third account so copy that come here and come back to the second account because i'm the owner the second account is the owner from here we have to pass the address here we have to pass the amount and you have to click on this transaction and you will find that the transaction is failed because right now this account the account number two is the owner and he hasn't updated he hasn't deposited any fund into the contract that's why it's insufficient balance that's the logic we are checking from here it's working fine so if i come here if i come here if i come to the account number one because that's the account has deposited the fund and if i make the transaction now so i have to pick another address so i'll come here i'll copy this address and i'll go back to the first one and now i can easily able to transfer the fund okay so not this one this is the one and i want to deposit because that's the amount i have deposited for the first account and if i click on this transaction you can see the transaction went through so if you copy that address and you can paste here you will find that that address has that account okay? so this is the account we transfer the fund and if i come here copy the address and if i come and paste the address here i can see that this is the fund we have five earlier this five was transferred by the account number one but now we have transfer but now account number one have transferred the fund to the account number three so we can easily able to see the balance in the account number three okay so everything is working fine from here the account can easily able to withdraw okay and this is the simple smart contract we have written for the banking industries okay so what we are doing we are keeping the track of the entire data then we have this deposit then we have this withdrawal function transfer get balance grant access revoke and destroy okay so this is a pretty simple contract we have built for the financial industry and you can add more complexity on this so i just want you to write down the functionality which can include into this contract and in case in future we definitely going to build we're going to utilize this same contract for building one of the dap okay so i just want you to write down the functionality from your end okay and this one is a really good practice if you really want to familiarize yourself for the smart contract development so we have focused backing industry you have seen that how we have structured the data how we are mapping the data and these are the very important things because in that way your concept will get cleared okay when you will write the smart contract for any industry whether you are writing for the banking industry or no matter what project you are working on you will get an idea okay this is how i have to structure the data so entire algorithm data modeling will become very clear to you when it's come to building the smart contract okay so hope this entire contract makes sense i want you to re-watch try to understand and try to add fun more functionality from your end this one is a very basic one i want you to add more functionality and write down all the functionality in the comment section so later when we will build the application we can utilize those functionality in the contract in our DAF. okay so with that i'm ending this video i believe that you guys have access the complete playlist because we're going to write close to 60 plus smart contract for different industry okay the only motive i have for building this entire playlist to give you a clear understanding that how you have to think when it's come to writing the smart contract okay so we're going to move to the complex topic as well but right now i just want to start from the beginning to make your hand dirty so you can so you can start writing the smart contract as quick as you can okay so with that if you're new to my channel hit like and subscribe that will motivate me a lot and do let me know what you think about this entire playlist and what's your question you have with that let's move to the next video